The Leica SL system just got a new family member and it's this brand new Aposomicron SL widest open aperture is an f2. Its focal length is 28 millimeters and it's an aspheric lens and clearly in the Leica lens systems we have close relatives to this lens for instance in the Leica M system but in the SL lineup it's the first of its kind and what I want to do in the next minutes is quickly unboxing the lens having a first look also mounting a protector here because I typically want to protect my lenses and since bad glass on good glass produces bad images I typically also spend some money on these protectors and this one here is an original protector from Leica. What I also want to do is a first few tests with that lens when it comes to autofocus in order to get some first impressions on the performance of the lens and then very likely in a second video I will take the lens on the SL2 outside and do a real life shooting to also have clear evidence that this lens deserves the Aposomicron name which stands for top-notch quality for the best of the best. And now let's kick off the video. So let's open the box and let's see what's inside. That typically is a challenge if they are brand new, but we'll get this done. All right, so let's have a look. First of all, we have a pouch here. The pouch is to protect the lens on travel, of course. Quite nice, actually. Looks good with that sticker with the Leica logo on it. Very good. Then we have here a little brochure, which is, I don't know what it is. Let's have a look. Oh, it's just uh, safety, caution, you know, dealing with electrical circuits, these kind of things, not very interesting. Then we have checks and balances. So someone here signed up for that lens that it is in the best possible condition, which is very good. And then we can further open this here. Et voila. Wow, that is a huge lens for 28 millimeters. Looks really, really good. Let's get this out. So we have the typical lens hood here, which we always have in the SL lens lineup. Looks very good. Is plastic, not metal, I guess. Doesn't look like metal to me, but uh, is the typical form we have on these Aposomicron lenses, the 50 millimeter, the 35 millimeter, and uh, is matching the lineup of the SL lenses, of course. So here's the lens and oh my gosh, it's a heavy piece of glass. It's really, really heavy, that lens. I will come to the specs in the course of the video, like I always do when I do lens reviews. And it's the typical design of Aposomicron lenses in the Leica SL lineup here but the weight is remarkable. Let's now mount the lens on the Leica SL2 and before that let's clean up the mess here on the table to get the free table and then let's start with first impressions and then also slotting this in in the Leica universe comparing it with other 28 millimeter lenses very quickly and then doing a few first tests on autofocus and the performance of the lens. Actually let's quickly rewind the tape. So before I mount the Aposomicron 28mm on my Leica SL2, I wanted to quickly show the 28mm brand new lens here side by side with its Aposomicron relatives in the Leica SL lineup. And the lens hood is the same for 35mm and 28mm, but on the 50mm Aposomicron in the SL lens system we have a circular lens hood here and the reason is very likely attached to the focal length of 50 millimeters sitting somewhere between wide angle and tele. In terms of size, they are totally comparable. So let's get them a bit closer here. And looking at them, they have almost exactly the same height here and almost exactly the same size. If we wanna be pedantic, we will see that the 35 millimeter is a tiny little bit taller than the other two. The 50 millimeter and the 28, they are a perfect match. And if you look at the focus ring, it's also sitting in the same place. So here I think also totally comparable. From a design perspective, these three Aposomicron lenses reflect the minimalistic approach Leica has on their camera and lens systems. And they are all totally in black. There are a few markings here for the lens hood to actually mount it. And then we have in amber the focal length and that's basically all which is on the lens. And I find this is just perfectly beautiful. Let's now mount this brand new Aposomicron 28 millimeter to my Leica SL2 camera body. And for this, we first have to remove the body cap here. So we push the button and remove this. And then looking at the lens and looking at the rear side of the lens, we find a little sticker here. And the sticker says attention and it's also in a red color, which typically means pay attention, be careful, 
there is something important to note and it says use with latest camera firmware only available on leica-camera.com and clearly on my Leica SL2 I already have installed the latest firmware so we are on the safe side. So let's remove that cap here. Let's find the red dot for aligning this to the camera body. Here is the red dot on the camera body which I am going to use now and then lining this up and basically listening to the click. Very good. So this is now mounted and looking at the camera now in combination with the lens looks really really good in the same way as it looks with the two other Aposomicron lenses. I just showed a moment ago and now we can focus on image quality and in particular also on autofocus and the performance and behavior of the lens. This 28mm Aposumicron SL lens is the first of its kind for the Leica SL and the Leica SL2 but 28mm is actually a very common focal length in the Leica universe and I'm going to show now a few examples of other 28mm lenses which you can use on the Leica SL body and the Leica SL2 and also on Leica M bodies. My first example of a classical 28mm lens coming from Leica is a bit of an exotic one. It's the PC Super Angle on R lens. Widest open aperture is an f2.8, 28mm in the same way as this brand new Aposumicron 28mm for the Leica SL system. And I've shown this lens various times on my channel. I've shot it on Leica M series camera bodies. I've shot it on the Leica SL2. I recently actually shot it on the Fuji GFX100 with 102 megapixels resolution on that medium format sensor. And no matter where you shoot that lens, it performs very, very well and is a very good example that 28 millimeters in terms of focal length is a common value proposition coming from Leica. And then of course we have in the Leica M series, the classical Summicron lenses with 28 millimeters focal length. And here is an example of a special edition of that lens. It's from the Lenny Kravitz Special Edition, 28 millimeters. It's an M Summicron lens. Widest open aperture is an f2.0 in the same way as what we have on the upper Summicron for the Leica SL and the Leica SL2. It's an aspherical lens and it's very well performing. And there is another special edition I have here, which is from the Safari lineup. And that's this one here. This is not in the market for a long time. It's again a Summicron M, widest open aperture f2, 28 mm Safari green and is here currently mounted on my Leica M10P Safari Special Edition. The tiniest 28 mm lens I'm aware of is this one here and this is from the Leica Classic Series and if I remove all the caps here you actually get an impression how small this lens is. And if you look inside here this is a Summeron M lens, widest open aperture is an f5.6 28 millimeters as said and this lens is natively available for Leica M series cameras but with the L mount to M mount adapter can of course also be used on the Leica SL and the Leica SL2 and the performance of this lens is incredibly good and as I said I've shown this several times on my channel I like it a lot and it's very likely not only in the Leica universe but in general the smallest 28 millimeter lens you can get. My last data point confirming that Leica is in love with 28 millimeters is the classic Leica Q and the Leica Q here that's not the Q2 but the Leica Q in a special edition has fixed mounted a 28 millimeter lens here and you see here the focal length 28 millimeters and if you look into the lens inside we see this is a Sumilux, widest open aperture is an f1.7, 28 millimeters and that's the classical setup for the Leica Q cameras and it continues of course with the Leica Q2. So here we have the same setup, 28 millimeters and that Sumilux here is the same lens as what we had on the Leica Q1, this time on the Leica Q2, widest open aperture of 1.7 and it's also continuing the same story of course on the Leica Q2 monochrome which I have here and again we have that lens and here we also can switch from uh, normal shooting mode to macro shooting mode and it's just a fantastic lens with a very nice shallow depth of field if you want to shoot it at 1.7 and in general confirming that Leica has a long tradition, a long history with 28 millimeter lenses. Let's now have a quick look into the specs of the 28 millimeter upper Summicron for the Leica SL and the Leica SL2. What I'm typically most interested in is the minimum focusing distance, the maximum reproduction ratio and whether this lens can also be used for close-ups. 
And then let's do a quick autofocus test before then in a second video we go out and do some real life shooting to actually prove that this deserves the name to be an upper Sumicron lens. In order to find the specs of this lens, I'm here on the official Leica website for the upper Sumicron SL 28 millimeters. And although I'm looking for the specs mainly, I wanted to quickly scroll through because here are all kinds of interesting data points. And the one I want to spend a couple of minutes on is the autofocus system. And Leica says here that the autofocus system on the upper Sumicron SL 28 millimeter is a dual synchro drive. And they say here from zero to sharp in no time. And I'm going to test this out as I said before, because I think a snappy autofocus is something you really want to have in a camera system like the Leica SL and the SL2, where in contrast to Leica M series cameras, you actually have autofocus. So you need to have a lens that plays nicely with the autofocus system of the camera. Scrolling down here, you have some more data points. So here they talk about contrast of the lens. It's a bit disappointing that they use as an example in the chart here, the upper Sumicron SL 75 millimeters instead of reproducing that chart for the actual 28 millimeters, which is the lens to be discussed here on this website. But I don't mind that much. Scrolling down further, we find the technical data here. And then we see that this lens has 13 elements in 10 groups. And there are actually six aspherical surfaces in that lens. So it's a quite complex construction. And then what I said before, what interests me typically most in lens spec sheets is the minimum focusing distance, which is here 24 centimeters and the larger scale, or as I would call it, the maximum reproduction ratio is actually one to five, which means 20%. And that means in combination with the minimum focusing distance of 24 centimeters, you can actually get very close to your subject and you can take close up shots, which almost come close to macro shots. And that's something I typically like on lenses because it just enhances the versatility of the lens. When we started our review, I said the lens has some heavy weight and you find that data point here. So we are talking about 700 grams and with the lens hood, it's actually 750 grams. So it's at the upper end for a Leica lens. The Leica M series lenses are typically much more low weight. Whereas this one here is in the same order of magnitude in terms of weight as the upper Sumicron 50 millimeter and the upper Sumicron 35 millimeter in the Leica SL lens lineup. In order to get some first impressions about the performance of the lens, let's do some autofocus tests here in the studio under bright light conditions. And then let's go into a low light environment and let's see how the autofocus is performing. It's an open secret that the upper Sumicron lenses in the Leica SL lens lineup perform much better in terms of autofocus than Sumilux lenses. And I'm curious to try this out now. So let's get started. In terms of settings, let's quickly go to the status screen to see what I have here. So here I'm shooting in autofocus single. I'm in aperture priority. I have the aperture wide open at f2.0, which always provides the biggest challenge to the autofocus. I have field autofocus here and I have multi-field metering because we have different lighting conditions in different places here in the studio. I'm shooting in RAW and JPEG and uh, I think we are good to go and kick this off now. And you know, if the frame turns green, the focus sits where it's supposed to sit. So let's start green, green, green. <laughs> By the way, I took the shot here accidentally on the background on the TV, green, 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 green. So this autofocus is under bright lighting conditions, absolutely spot on, super quick, and you can totally rely on the focus here. So that's, I think the first result. I wanted to test. The next autofocus test I'm going to do is still under bright lighting conditions here in the studio, but it's concerning tracking and being sticky on a subject. And uh, I have placed here in the middle of the scene one of my models. This is not one of my real life models, which many people know from my channel, where we have real human beings, but it's actually a figure or a character from The Witcher. But I used this many times in my studio when I wanted to test something and I think it will serve the purpose here also. So let's adjust the camera for focus tracking. And for this, we go into the status screen. We switch from autofocus single to autofocus continuous. And then we go on the focus side here to tracking. And let's see what we get here. So um, let's adjust the focus to my model. So here we go. 
I think that's good. And now let's start tracking. So if I move now the camera here, you see how this is super sticky on my model, no matter how quickly I move the camera up and down, whatever it is, looks really good in bright lighting conditions. This lens plays very nicely with the camera body and the autofocus system, and you can rely on the focus tracking in the way you want to have it. In order to test autofocus in low light, I have now switched off all studio lights here and I will use actually a candle to enlighten the scene. So here we go. Here is my candle. That's all the light I have available. I will place this behind my subjects and will see if the autofocus is still working. My natural assumption in a low light environment as we have it here in front of us in the scene is that autofocus has a much harder time to actually find focus. And in terms of settings here, I switched back to the autofocus single setting and the field autofocus. I'm still in multimetering mode. We could also go to spot here. Let's try to do this and go to spot. And uh, let's now see if we find autofocus in such a low light situation here. And uh, you see on both sides, the cameras are pretty much in the dark. If I remove my SL2 for a moment, you see how dark the scene really is when I'm filming this through the video camera here. And of course, in the Leica SL2, if I'm on spot metering, it's already enlightening the scene by pushing up the ISO to 6400 here. So let's try to find focus on the left hand side, immediately green on the model, which is enlightened by the candle green on the camera in the background here, green, 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 green. It's not as quick as in bright light conditions, but it's reasonably quick. And I think we can rely on that autofocus system, which is driven by the interplay between the upper Summicron lens, as well as the camera body very well, even in low light situations. For now, that's all I wanted to show. And I think uh, in a second video, I will go outside and shoot that brand new upper Summicron 28 millimeter on my Leica SL2 in real life shooting conditions. But what we've seen so far is very promising. The autofocus system works very well in bright light, in low light. The tracking in good lighting conditions works also very well. And uh, it's also, I guess, from the spec sheet, a very promising value proposition for the Leica SL and the Leica SL2. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on my channel. There is always more to come. Stay safe and healthy and peace out.